Good afternoon, everybody. Now we are going to start the clinical section, and that section will be started by a presentation from surgical side. So there will be three cases. Uh, two will be presented by Professor Umomie from McGuay uh, University of Medicine, and one by uh, Dr. Winbu there from uh, North Oklahoma uh, Teaching Hospital. So uh, without wasting time, may I invite Professor Umomie to start his first case. Okay, thank you, Professor Asiai Utu, for your kind introduction. So, so I actually, we, we have two cases. Okay, can you see the slide? Yes, we can see it. Can see oh, it. All right. Okay, good. Uh, this is a very interesting case from uh, University of Medicine, Mugui. Hello. Okay. Oh, Hello. It's HR alarm. Oh, sorry. Okay. Huh? Uh, this is a very interesting case from University of Medicine, Mugwe. We, we do. Uh, uh, it is a 10-year-old boy presenting with repeated attack of hematemesis, and he was admitted to our surgical ward okay, uh, of the Mugwe Regional Hospital. Uh, he, he had the uh, hematemesis and about 100 ml. Uh, regarding the past history, he has similar attacks since the age of one and a half year. And he had a frequent hospital, hospitalization about 10 times within 10 year duration with Hemidamisi and Melina at Magui Regional Hospital. Actually, it was to the pediatric wards. So he was treated as cirrhosis or liver with the hypertension. And at the age of five year, uh, he was under care of pediatrician in the past, and they, they referred him to the Yango General Hospital GI unit. And uh, the child underwent first endoscopy at the age of five years. And they found the grade four esophageal VRC, and they did the EVA. I think I, I, I'm not sure about the procedure, but they, they look like uh, under general anesthesia. And he underwent second time. He had a repeated attack about five times within five times or 10 times. Sometimes admission. So uh, he underwent second endoscopy and EVA at the Young General Hospital GI unit. And he had a third time recheck. And after two months later, uh, he came back with a repeated attack of ACA bleeding and he was admitted to our general surgical ward. So he, on examination, he had a no stigmata of chronic liver insufficiency. He had no jaundice, no clave, no SID. No peripheral edema except the uh, huge splenomegaly. Uh, his hemogram show he was negative for hepatitis screening, hepatitis viruses, and liver function were within the normal limit. Actually, he underwent ultrasonography in 2014, and it was in Yangon General Hospital. It showed a fairly coarse echo in the liver, and port vein was tortuous dilated vessels in the prehepatic, perihepatic, and splenic hyalur region. Splen was moderately enlarged. And the radiologist's opinion from Yangon General Hospital in 2004 was he diagnosed as a chronic hepatitis with water hypertension. And we repeat the ultrasonography in 2016 at our hospital. So actually they reported as a, as a normal liver with splenomegaly with water hypertension. And this is a comparison between the two ultrasound from Yangon General Hospital and our hospital. And this is a CD abdomen. It was done in 2011 at Asia Rai Hospital, but it was a gastroenterologist direction. Actually, radiologist reported, Professor Asia Utenwe, he reported as a hepatic fibrosis, huge splenomegaly, and poor hypertension. So you, it says, uh, I'm not sure about you. Can you see the point out? That's a, the port vein is very much dilated. There's a huge splenomegaly on the right hand side. And uh, Professor Siayudele reported as a border hepatitis, probably secondary to hepatic fibrosis. Liver biopsy may be helpful for confirmation. And we repeat the CD abdomen in 2016 in our hospital. 
Actually, our imaging quality is not as good as Yangon General Hospital, but it shows a huge splenomegaly. And for the way was very much dilated. And there are many pooling of the dye in the highland, the liver highland. And uh, our radiologist reported as a splenomegaly with for the hepatitis. So they didn't mention about the state of the liver. And there's no, no diagnosed as a cirrhosis. And clinically, we don't have a stigma down cirrhosis. So what is the cause of this repeated hematemesis? How are we going to treat? So uh, obviously here the hematemesis and melina due to esophageal AVC because here two times of EVA by gastroenterologist from Yangon General Hospital. So what is the cause of esophageal AVC? No doubt. It is oh, due to the hepatitis. Okay, so, so actually I, we review the literature. So there, there are many causes, prehepatic, intrahepatic, post-hepatic. Actually, majority, almost all cases are caused by the cirrhosis. But prehepatic causes are very rare, and post-hepatic causes are not reported in our country. And there's an inflow hypertension, hypersplenic, hepatoarteria, venous fistula. So this is about the vein anatomy. The, the, they mentioned about the extra non serotic causes of potabatation, like prehabitic potabatic vein thrombosis, splenic vein thrombosis, and post causes like Bacchiari syndrome, constructed pericarditis, etc. So, uh, possible causes in this case positive vein thrombosis, potabatic cirrhosis, schistosomiasis, and Bacchiari syndrome. But reviewing back his history, there was no history of amyloid sepsis, which could cause border vein thrombosis, and no stigma down chronic embedded insufficiency, and liver function were normal, and he was negative for viral markers. So we are thinking whether he might have a bad Chiari syndrome, but actually his clinical picture didn't look like bad Chiari syndrome. Bad Chiari syndrome is a habitual venous outflow obstruction, either due to thrombosis, or juma or obstructed lesions in the inferior vena cava or the right heart. But he has no history of, no symptoms suggestive of Bacchiari syndrome. But this is a Bacchiari syndrome and causes. And these are clinical features. So he doesn't have a side D. And actually, I, I, I reviewed the CT scan with the Professor Donunu E from Maguire. Regional Hospital. So she said it could be a case of for uh, the cavernous formation on the Porter vein. She said she had an experience in Singapore and she reported one case as in Singapore. So it's quite likely, quite likely, sir. But sorry, actually, this is a Porter Cavernova, Porter Cavernova or cavernous formation of the Porter vein. First reported by Bearfoot and Stewart. And the time Kivanuma was uh, used later by uh, another surgeon. And this is a Kivanas formation. The main, the ideology is not exactly known, but they reported, that they suggested that the thrombosis of the border vein leading to Kivanas collateral, which later manifested as a border Kivanuma. Actually, this is a picture from the uh, China. So the, the, the quality is very good. So there's a lot of, May formation, cavernous venous formation around border way. So actually, we correct that anemia. Patient underwent basing or elective surgery. Actually, we decided not to repeat that idiot. So we are general surgeons, so we decided this should be, patient should have a revascularization procedure. So actually, this is a operative finding. This liver was normal. Uh, one thing I regret was uh, I didn't do the biopsy, biopsy because liver was normal. He has been with the H and M and whatever dungeon for many years, so the liver should be surrounded. So I, I didn't do biopsy. Liver was completely normal, glistening, normal color, and there was huge splenomegaly, and there was a lot of tortuous dilated veins around the liver highland. So I did the splenectomy. Uh, extensive devascularization procedure. I'm sorry for poor quality. At that time, the camera were not very good. So this is a esophagus 
and this is a gastroesophageal junction, and this is a stomach side. So I did extensive devascularizing cut and clamp under the seosa, and sorry, actually muscular layer of the esophagus is reached. I, I did the spleen anatomy first, followed by devascularization of the gastroesophageal junction. But I didn't do the transition procedures. So uh, this is the gallbladder. This is a completely normal looking liver. And this is a tortuous dilated vein. It looks like about the size of my thumb. So it's quite big, quite deep, big. So and then four or five vessels around the highland, liver highland, going to the highland. So actually, after splint, here the thrombocytopenia, after splint at me, play like a one back to normal. Uh, here the unavoidable recovery, and uh, this is a post-operative scar, a midline scar, and this is a post-operative finding. And actually, I, I forget about him for four years, and after that, after that, uh, there's because of this meeting. Actually, I I got him by four, and <laughs> he and one. He was uh, at the time of aging. He was ten years old, but he is now fifteen years old. So actually, we we repeat the. OGDS. So yeah, actually. Hello, meeting low is the normal Oh, this is a endoscopy. So it's over gas and the 35 centimeter was normal. But Uh, there's a small area of uh, regarding we see here. Yes, only in one one column. Maybe about maybe I, I might say grade two is of a basis. Otherwise, no man. Okay. And so actually uh, I did the uh, I I in fact spread the fundus of the stomach. There was no gastric BC. And this is a duplex scan but for my professor Donunui. It showed dilated veins around the liver highland, liver highland. And liver architecture showed bright echoes, but otherwise normal, not mounting to stosis. There was no obstruction on the hepatic vein, which could be occluded by bacteria syndrome. So no evidence of hepatic vein except the dilated. And this is a red color and blue color. They show the direction or the blood flow. So the, this is a finding. So the, the, it's only dilated veins around the hyla. It's a key point. And she reported as a chronic hepatitis, but clinically there's no evidence of chronic hepatitis. And given as my formation on the portal vein. Actually, I, I tried to find many years for the diagnosis, but I discussed her, the x-rays with the heart. And uh, she pointed out this is a cavernous malformation. It's quite likely. So it's a brief literature review. Actually, sorry, I, actually, I, I, because this is a short clinical session, so I don't want to go into detail. But there are many treatments, many treatments. So we might, we might have resuscitation first, uh, followed by finding the cause and the line cause, including cirrhosis, and then we have to treat, treat. If it is due to cirrhosis, uh, the easiest way is a repeated endoscopy of ACL ligation. If it is free, we can treat with the depascularization procedures, photogavation, skips, and finally liver transplant. Uh, actually, these are very sophisticated. So the operation we can perform by general surgeon is a, is a depascularization procedure. In 1985, Professor Suji Yura from Japan, he reported the extensive devascularization from thoracic cavity as well as abdominal cavity, splenectomy, and esophageal transition. He had a high success rate, but high modality, high modality, and this is difficult to repeat. Repeat. So nowadays, general surgeons do the modified Suji Yura procedure. That is uh, the only abdominal approach, and transition is only done by the step last. The plus, right? Professor Uang Wen, Xia Uang Wen, he was a pioneer in Myanmar and he did modify Suji Yura procedure for his doctorate thesis. Right? Actually, it's quite difficult to reproduce. So, that's a, another procedure 
called the Modified Hazard Procedure. Actually, Hazard started his operation in 1967, so many years earlier than the uh, Suji Yura procedure, but it was not popular, not, not very popular in, in the Western country. So he reported that his original, his original operation included the extensive devascularization procedure, bigotomy and uh, splenectomy. Splenectomy. There are many modifications. So what, what we did here is uh, just splenectomy and extensive devascularization. So uh, I think well, one doctor read this as was reported, uh, Dr. Myomidan from University of Medicine too, and Professor Udanwe from Liva Unit, he performed some procedure. So, so I, I learned this, this procedure from Professor Udanwe uh, and uh, I performed on my own. Uh, but actually we have no, no reported case, but in one study from the China, they study more than hundreds of cases, more than hundreds of patients. And the 10 year, they present that these are the clinical characteristics. These are the side of obstructions on the right hand side. And uh, there are many treatments for these patients conservative endoscopy therapy, emergency screw therapy, prophylactic endoscopy approach, abumer, surgical procedure, splenectomy, splenectomy plus vascular disconnection liver transplant and splenorenation. So the take home message is, photoequivalent is a rare cause of photo hypertension. It starts with photo vein thrombosis followed by recognition and collateral formation. Profile to specialist center is necessary. Anoscopic variceal ligation and devascularization procedures are effective. Okay, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Professor Umumia, for your very interesting case. Well, I, I would like to ask one question to Siamu that why, why, why didn't you choose to do uh, some form of shunt procedure to reduce the uh, uh, portal hypertension? Because this is definitely a case of portal hypertension due to portal vein thrombosis or portal vein occlusion. Somehow, the, the original cause, I don't know. But if you can do a shunt, uh, the varicose problem will be solved, I think. Because we have done one case, a 19-year-old girl, uh, referred to me by Professor Tantai, uh, physician, general physician. So we decided to do a proximal linoreno shunt because distal linoreno shunt is very difficult and I haven't done it. So we decided to do proximal, uh, proximal linoreno shunt because we dare not approach the uh, the Port of area to do a port of conversion because this is a, it's a messy area with a lot of dilated veins. So we try to approach the renal vein and splenic vein and then we connect it. And then after that, the problem was solved. So, what is your opinion, Siamo? Okay, good. Thank you so much, Siai, for, for your kind advice. Uh, first of all, I'm not an expert in the uh, port of conversion. I only did one, uh, one case. And Actually, the decision has a high modality, high modality. So, so they are, uh, generally speaking, there are two, two shunts. So the main center, main, main portal gave us, uh, which has a high modality, and the selective, selective shunt at the devascularization area of the stomach, which is a linorena, different forms of linorena. So linorena shunt has a shunt occlusion rate after three to five years, five years, and they have a less chance of angiopathy. Uh, central shunts, they can have a post operative uh, encephalopathy and quality of uh, quality of shunt may not be as good as uh, the uh, other procedure. So I decided that this is the first procedure and it lasted for four years. And after that, if there if is, I might have to refer either you or specialist center for the or to give a share. So, so this is my, my, my thinking. I think my thinking, so let, let's have procedure. <laughs> Okay, and the session is a high modality, so, so I, I high modality and high anger flow with the chance rate. So I dare not to do it. Thank you, CIA. Usually, the liver function uh, in these cases are normal. So if you do uh, not a central shunt, if it's a peripheral shunt, then uh, that might have the problem, solve the problem for longer years. 
Okay, so okay, thank you the, so much. Yeah, yeah the, the floor is open for discussion as well. Any any question from the audience or any discussion or comment from the audience, it's invited. Are welcome. So there is one question. Is there any role of medicine like propanol in patients who cannot undergo surgery? From Sia Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a very, very difficult question, Sia. Actually, I, we, we surgeons don't believe the propanol. There are but, but many trials which pay the father the propanol. But I think one, one paper stated that the, the, in combined with the I think it end of scopic basis here, like H plus propanol is effective. effective. But propanol alone trials are going on, but I don't know the result. I don't know the result. But, but what happened is if the patient stop completely, there's a rebound phenomenon and they, they started to bleed. So, so they need to take lifelong procedures. Lifelong. I think, I think tips, tips is a lesser procedure. Trans jugular intrapathic portal system is a, it's a minimally invasive procedure. The less morbidity and modality, but, but I think shunt occlusion rate is the, the same, but after two or three years. But propranol is affected to some extent, but I cannot say propranol alone is affected. But the trials are going on, so they might be beneficial in the future. Yeah, the only thing again, it's a, if the patient cannot undergo surgery, so he's suggesting uh, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, see, yeah, definitely, yeah. Okay, any any questions from the audience or any discussion from the audience? If not, we, we are going to proceed with next case. Oh, question answer, tell us. Okay. Okay, if there is no more uh, comments or questions, so uh, we are going to proceed with new case, uh, next case. Uh, that will be presented also by Professor Umumi from McGuay as well. Umu, please proceed with next case. Oh, okay, see. Okay, okay, can you see the slides? Uh, what, what? Not, not yet, not yet. It's, uh, yes, now, now. Kumo, you have two weapons. <laughs> oh, okay. <sir. laughs> oh. Okay, so, uh, this case, uh, it was about four years ago. Four years ago, so 39 year old me with psychotic, psychiatric problem, uh, who stabbed himself by the kitchen knife several times to the abdomen as well as the chest. And he was admitted first to mainland hospital and then referred to our hospital. And he arrived in the, at night, early at night about 7 a.m., 7 p.m. Uh, here's a history of chronic alcoholics and alcoholic-related psychosis. Uh, examination review, he was hemodynamically stable and his oxygen saturation was 95% with air. And there's a reduced air entry on the left side. And there's a, a, a weapon inside you in the center of the, the lower chest, which was moving with each heartbeat. So the, the, this is a situation, sorry. I took the video, but mm, so sorry, this is only the picture, the, the picture, so. His immune glowing was 8.1. Uh, we cross match him, and he also was found to have a hepatitis B sulfate antigen positive. We did the chest X-ray, and we result five units of blood, and we prepare for the emergency situation. But this is an X-ray, it was, not, not very informative. This, this is an anthropocene, post Andrea view, which revealed the haziness in the left side. And this is a lateral view. So the knife was piercing under the, just before the vertebra, vertebra. So it could pierce any medial standard structures. Actually, well, we have no experience, no cardiothoracic surgeon, so I consented with Professor Wenjo. It was four years ago uh, with by telephone, and I sent the 
X-ray picture, plain X-ray picture with a fiber. Fiber. So actually, it was a telecommunication or teleconsultation, but it was not popular at that time. So I tell you, was that we discussed with the CIE discussed with the Japanese professor this morning. So I actually. So, so what he said was, uh, Professor Winjo, do you have your lesson? Do I do I a year man about the specialist and the manlier and he's on which are manlier six hour drive. He's on the chair, what they a year man. He do I share a mess of your credit namely, I said, how the manama, general NS and army, they a year so I don't namely, they might have shown me, but the matter of Nagore that they love their yoga, they love their yoga, and I'm not quite. I just do to record me blue bar phone look I do your and not get a band we get about me. If we have about me, do blue show on me. Do a pericardia person, I switch out in my DDI to show needed. You know, the cut through them as well. I do your light. Your light is not general background, but not general background limitation. Let's see, no background, no vascular surgery. My experience, she, my eyes, she, England, my Roger, Crody, and not for the me, Lonan. And as supervision, or not, you're the aneurysm repairs, or the well out Lonan, was a consultant at the well over. So I bought to set the algo set the right experience here, the fan board the right experience here. But the law because you don't say experience the one machine. The one machine will not be the ever galaxy, Luzi, or be the other. So I don't have the book on the senior, senior consultant, or good or END, my young guy here. Well, I am due to buy. And I said, to do a letter board do it. And I natural the chapter below the good. I will not do only be my letter in that the window of your time. I cannot explain consent. But I will go on a jagger, he would animically stable down and busy and look at it. เอ่อจรอดาวัดขึ้นดาวตัวเรกอร์ดมีว่าดาวเวนจ์ออฟยูเรดามแล้วตัวเรกอร์ดมีเฟดีการีออดมีเอ่อนั่นน่ะลักเ
ตระหนักตัวอ่ะตัวอวะกะตระหนักตัวอวะกะหาเลยว่าผิดตาอ่ะตระหนักตัวอวะกะตระหนักตัวอวะกะหาเลยว่าผิดตาอ่ะตระห
Idaal, congratulations. Xiao Yun Yun, is there any role of medicine out there? Xiao Yun Yun, yeah, that how ni? So, how to pass it? Uh, is this patient still in this world? I am not 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 about your surgical skill and expertise. I am worried about his underlying psychiatric problem. It may be Manchusen syndrome, and he may repeat such self-inflicted injury. And I was saying, "Only they can come here." I was saying, "Only they." Kalau kamu biar cuci tayar, tu dia baik juga. Any comments uh, or questions from the audience? Two point zero two. Oh, see, I'm sorry. Congratulations. So. Any more comments or questions from the audience? Well, if there are no more comments from the audience or questions from the audience, I would like to congratulate Xiao Mo Mie. So, who who had who has done uh, a daring operation? And we really support his uh, decision. Oh well, there are one one from AP Doctor also mean the knife is was not serrated. What have been done during operation? Oh sorry, <laughs> I have to apologize. I didn't do the antibody washout or the bidadin washout. I'm not sure the reaction of the bidadin. So I just irrigated that with the saline, and we gave the systemic antibiotics. Actually, I'm not sure whether we put the topic antibody. So actually, don't the patient was no fever, completely healthy, healthy. It had went about four years ago. So actually, we didn't follow up for the psychiatric assessment, but we referred to psychiatrist for six months. Uh, six months. Or so. We follow up for six to six, I think maybe six, seven to nine months. Nine months. Uh, after that, he didn't come back again. <laughs> Okay, so and then your antibody wash out the body. I'm looking at general saline. Ah, general let me let me send them again. We watch general system antibody. Did did let nobody not to worry. Okay, so thank you for sharing your experience. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. So if there is no more comments or questions, so so let's uh, give a great applause to Xiao Wu Mie for his daring operation, saving two lives. Thank you, Kobo. So okay, thank you so much, yeah. <laughs> so we would like to proceed with a third case, uh, which will be presented by Dr. Wing Kukutet from North Oklapa uh, Teaching Hospital. So he's going to present a synchronous primary tumor. Dr. Winkle, would that please? Thank you, Siai. Thank you, Siai, for your kind introduction. And good afternoon, Siai and so all my senior and junior colleagues. My job is synchronous primary tumor. Uh, I am that this is my introduction. For the cancer of colon and kidney are common malignancy. The incidence of coexistent colon cancer and renal primary tumor are rare. The incidence of synchronous renal cell carcinoma and colorectal cancer is heterogeneous ranging from 0 0.03 to 4.85%. The etiology and pathogenesis of such multiple tumor remain unclear. Although some hypothesis that concurrent tumor can rise from the tissue of same embryological origin. Coexisting tumor in the colon and kidney are more often diagnosed now due to the widespread use of ultrasound, CT scan, 
and mRNA technique. In this report, I will discuss about the synchronous primary malignancy or colon cancer in 75-year-old lady and 53-year-old gentleman. They have the difference too. In the case one, First of all, I would like to I will, I, will, I would like to that, that, that this case has been uh, previously present in the in the Yama Chaneo study. This is the case one. A 75 year old lady present with a history of a small amount of leave virus and open room for imagination. So we do colonoscopy and wish to carcinoma of the proximate sandy colon and mousy will be moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma. <coughs> uh, we do we do this staging work with CECD abdomen and pelvis, and which will be incident the finding of the renal carcinoma 2.3 and 2.7 centimeters at the side of mid region or the right kidney located laterally, and the carcinoma of the proximate sandy colon which is asymmetric to any of the colonial ward, about 6.6 centimeter. And so we did see it, which is no risk. This is a CD scan which show the carcinoma, a renal cell carcinoma at the mid portion of the right kidney. And this is the CD scan of the carcinoma of the descending colon. So we discussed the many options with the management option with the oncologist and urosidical team. <coughs> Decision was made for this surgery with a straight condition for the individual minutes. So we plan for the left colonotomy for C colon and the wide local addition for the RCC. Left colonotomy was approached by the midline addition, by the colorated team, and updated finding where and accelerated to at the proximate sending colon with COC involvement and intermediate node enlargement. No liver scanry, no anxiety, and no peridoneus. Eurosurgical did the wide local addition of the renal carcinoma by the right supraduate rich addition and also at the middle board, the right can be eroded 2.5 to 3 centimeter. No involvement of the brain system, no lenal enlargement. Our post operative course was an even two and she was discussed on 10 post operative. How about she reviewed the renal carcinoma, clear set type, right can be tumor was close to the one proximal. One recession margin and mind glomerulus closure of the underlying kidney. Colon advanced to be the authority of poorly differentiated dinocarcinoma jupiter. All the recession margin, including the CRM, were free from tumor. Created follicular and sinus hyperplasia was loaded in one limb. Uh, this is the biopsy specimen uh, which showed the renal cell carcinoma and the upper trigger. And uh, this is the who <clears throat> only differentiate the adenocarcinoma of the colon. So we did a juvenile therapy with auxiliary blood and capacitor being behind the American oncologist. Now the patient has three year post operative period and she is on regular checkup with imaging, tumor maca, and colonoscopy. She is well without any tumor garden up to now. This is the heavy story and the case two, who will not have the heavy story like this one. Case two in there. These eight year old gentlemen with the chief complaints of liver written off of a five month duration and history of constipation, chain of our habit, early morning, surya diarrhea, which is more troublesome for him, and the sense of incomplete education of present. No history of hematuria, no other unities. On abdominal examination, abdominal cavity, and, and degenerate examination, authority groups at the ACE and Indica. Colonoscopy we did and it's finding we are nodular authority lesion on the whole circumference of the retina, starting from eight centimeter up to the 15 centimeter, which is long segment. Vancey will be moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma. So we do the staging workout, CT abdomen and pelvis, and CD, C return with mesorated fat invasion and regional mesorated limb neuropathy. Circumference of water can up to 7.3 centimeter. At the mid order region, synchronous left RCC. A bit of handy match at the 7.56 into 7.4 centimeter at the mid and lower border of the left kidney, left renal vein, and IBC are
and this is the CT scan of this patient and apologize for the poor quality image. And this is the venous cell carcinoma. This is the now segment now segment tumor had the red cell, but then so we discussed the many option, management option at the mentally GIN hypnobiliary meeting with the oncologist, radiologist, pathologist, and then we discussed also with the urosurgical team and the decision was made for the palliative surgery. Once, so we decided uh, we plan for the one stage surgery for both limbs because they are on the same side. Left, so we did a left vertical nephrectomy and palliated low ARR and cover illustomy for stand by the surgical team. And operated finding we are the left venous cell carcinoma with a group about six and four centimeter and lower one third of the carcinoma of the retina, which is called a probable seven centimeter and then involving the three four circumference of the retina, but no society, no liver secondary. This is his biopsy result. Uh, colonoscopy biopsy research has shown the invasive morally differentiated colonic biopsy research show the invasive morally differentiated adenocarcinoma of the retina, invading up to the muscular process, which is T3, lymphovascular invasion are not present. All research in mind, including certain pressure research in mind, are free from tumor and metastatic lymph present in the five paracolic lymph. This terminal is free from the tumor. This is the renal biopsy, which will be the clear cell renal cell carcinoma invading the free nephrid fat and renal pelvic tumor site was assisting him down. Recession margin was free for tumor. Uh, his post operative PS was an even proven. He was the chest of the post operative team. Although he has a aggressive tumor, he, he can only do the full cycle of chemotherapy and start to do the severe response to chemotherapy. Because of severe anemia, which cannot be revived by the GMC effort, and he received only 10 fraction of the radiation therapy. At the same time, both of these time, the patient came back to the hospital with chicken bag of pain and left ear fossa and left flank pain. And on the examination, the patient condition was pain, the failure was present, abdomen is soft and mass in the paramilitary region and left. So we did CD abdominal and baby, which showed less recurrent to my meds, involving the retin, second mind, descending colon, left sewer mass inflammation, and the vascular. So we plan for the periodic care after consultation with oncologists. The patient condition generally was sent and is covered at seven, nine of post operation. This is my discussion. The presence of concomitant synchronous malignancy was first declared by Warren K. who was stated that each tumor must be present with definite picture of malignancy. It must have a distant pathological proof and possibility of one being metastasis or other must be excluded. In case one, coexistence of two primary individual tumor, one in the semicolon, one in right kidney, and case two, one in lower retin and one in the left kidney. In both cases, RCC asymptomatic and acetylene finding on CT scan. So the concomitant of RCC with other primary has been described, uh, such as the C bladder, C prostrate, colorated, lens, C lens, and black malignant melanoma, the skin, and non organ lymphoma. A recent report described that 4.8% of synchronous primary, synchronous colorated and renal carcinoma. Uh, but in the previous literature, uh, which is 0 0.03 to 0 0.5. Renal carcinoma may be translated into association with scan primary tumor and azalic cancer lesion. This has been found that asymptomatic and clinically identified kidney cancer can be common finally in the elderly patient with multiple malignancy. Synchronous colon primary tumor described in the latest solution though which decried the H and PCT and neoplasm with other organ like endometrium, ovary, breast, kidney, and other, and 70% of essence in mutation or the full mass majority can be found. In our case, it is excluded because there is no history, no strong history of family history. 
on our end the literature. Some of the same grown at Colon and Rene Cassie Numa did not have family history of Lenny. Silent growing as you see often diagnosed during the during the stage of the other primary illness. In the study of the knee at about 2.6 percent of the patient over the cancer synchronic tumor and her primary tumor included research is then a really option for this patient. Two regional research in profile was an extended research in on about centennial surgery for the synchronic disease or different organ, which has a severe advantages like a longer operation time, more blood loss, and higher cardiopulmonary risk. This is my conclusion. The coexistence of both colon cancer and primary nasal carcinoma outcome both in elderly. Popular use of images such as CT, MRI, PET scan may be related to hypergravity or multiple primary malignancy. Community research is still positive for home malignancy, but thorough stage and evaluation with multidisciplinary is mandated. These are the my reference take home messages. In the management of the malignancy, it is important to follow routine periodic check that leads to other synchronous primary malignancy. In the work of malignant tumor, primary tumor can be detected, and acute treatment should be aimed in the presence of malignant malignancy, even in the presence of malignancy. These are the references. Thank you, CIE. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wimbu, for your interesting uh, presentation. Uh, they are, uh, there is a comment from Sayunyon Day. So, Sayunyon Day question Is it really a two primary tumor? Love? Because it could also be a secondary uh, in kidney with primary in the colon or rectum. So, Sayi, a clear cell RCC resembles mucinous adenocarcinoma histology, a special stain in Varimia, located in the area of PB Java. So, biopsy result are all clear. Say, Cassie Numare, clear. Get the Cassie Numa or RCC. Who are the differences that you know, Cassie Numa? First, here, who are the differences that you know, Cassie Numare? Come back, say, Abrology, special day of the Larissa. 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 ဒါဆရာကြာတခုလောက်ပြောလို့ရအဲပြီးပြောပါတယ်ဒါဆရာဆရာဥညွတ်တဲ့ကျွန်တော်ငယ်ဆရာပါဆရာရဲ့အို
effectively in case one, either transfer junior or retrofer junior approach to avoid two big incision in one case. Then. I don't know. You decide to get you know. You know, you decide to get you know, 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 Okay. Any more comments or questions from the audience? Please, please. <laughs> ဟုတ်ကြတော့ဝါတော့ကျွန်တော်ဝါတော့ရန်ကုန်မှာရှိတော့လားစီအိုင်းဥထုံးမှာဝါအက်ဂရီနက်ကြူးမှာတယ်